Welcome. Today's guest is a highly decorated tech entrepreneur, former Fortune 100 corporate executive, sought after international speaker, trainer, strategist, ICF certified coach, and mentor who is committed to creating opportunities in the startup and corporate world for diverse and underrepresented groups. He is the co founder and executive chairman of TechPass a career pathway platform that helps college students connect with corporate recruiters and land their first job in tech. Now, in addition to almost three decades of service at some of the world's largest and most prestigious companies, he is a dedicated philanthropist. He currently serves on the board of directors of the International Coach Federation Foundation and the Institute for Sustainable Diversity and Inclusion. Please welcome Latin Business Magazine's top 100 U.S. Hispanics to watch and top 100 prominent Latinos in the business world honoree, Jose Pinheiro. Welcome, Jose. It is an honor to have you with us today. Eli, first of all, it's great to see you. What a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. What an important um field that you're in and how did you get so passionate about really empowering the underestimated and creating opportunities for diverse talent in in both the startup and the corporate worlds yeah uh this is very close to my heart um i of course i'm latino I look at my name look at my face uh, i was born and grew up in puerto rico came to the States for college and then work in corporate America. And in my more than 25 years in corporate America, uh, at some point I led all diversity and multicultural for Microsoft for their entire company. And at that point, I really, it really opened my eyes to see what were the challenges, the problems, some of the hurdles that women, people of color, uh, people from different origins, different orientations, different abilities have and face every day. And at that point, uh, this kind of became part of my life mission. Um, Ellie, people like you and I are, are very lucky. We are very lucky that we have had access to so many things. And I think it's so important for us to not only uh, continue opening the door for other people, but to also make things easier and better for them. So that's why I'm so committed to empowering and ensuring that you know, or the, what I call the underestimated, which are groups that have traditionally been underrepresented, get their fair share, get their fair shot. And to do that, there's so much that needs to be done. And I'm super thrilled to be here with you today to tell you about it. But this is something that I have lived and I have seen and I have taken as a personal mission to, to accomplish. So I'm thrilled to be here with you. And I, I would love to tell you a lot more about what we're doing, how, and how other people can also join the effort and also can help make things better for the future generations. Amazing. There is no question that there truly is disparate access to education. There's disparate access to opportunity. There's disparate access to funding. And there's disparate access to support and mentorship. So I love that... Uh, you are rolling up your sleeves and leading the charge. Uh, tell us more about how you're doing that. Yeah. So when we look at the, the challenges in terms of, and I love how you put it, disparate access, um, we can look at two things. We can look at what's happening in corporate America in terms of you know underrepresented and underestimated groups becoming part of corporate America. And then we can also see at this a look at this from the perspective of the startup world. So let's start with corporate America. So in corporate America today, you know, uh, you look at the numbers specifically when you go into into tech, it's even worse. In tech, women are, represent only about twenty five percent of the workforce, and then on top of that, women get paid less than men for doing the comparable job. So that's that's you know that's terrible and something that needs to be addressed. 
when we look at the, the, the percentages of the population, for example, Latinos right now, we are about 19% of the, of the U.S. population. We are still in the single digits, you know, uh, in most corporate America jobs. And if we go to high tech, it's even lower. The same thing for African-Americans. So I really hope that we get to, to parity, that we can really represent the communities in which we live and we work in the same way and in the same proportion. So there's so much there. And in a, in a few minutes, we'll talk about COVID and the impact. But right there, you know, we need to ensure that women, people of color, indigenous, different abilities, different orientations, that they get access to information, access to resources, that they find mentors and sponsors, that they understand basically how the game gets played, what works, yeah. what doesn't work. So a lot of this is it's about education, access to information, sharing best practices, coaching, sponsoring, mentorship, etc. So I've done a lot in that area. Um, I've coached um, as an executive coach, tons of people um, who are working in top companies. And the funny thing is that it doesn't matter where you go, it, you find the same challenges, the same challenges. Like sometimes when I was starting my career, I thought, well, you know, things are very hard now, but when I get to a, an executive level, then things will be easy. Guess what? It wasn't. It was <laughs> as difficult, as challenging. Maybe the titles change. Maybe the, 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 the names of the problems change. But it's the same, the same things. Uh, these are the same things. So I think it's so, so important um, to provide that support. And support is something that everybody needs. Um, by the way, the, there's a myth uh, about the lone champion, you know, she was the person who achieved this and she did it by herself nobody helped her the same thing the ceo he is he did this all by himself he moved a mountain and he achieved success it's not it's not real that's not no, real success, it's a myth it's yeah a myth. success takes a village right success yeah it takes a village it takes a village. a village i've worked with executives of companies and luckily for them they have an army of people they have you know uh, chief of staff, a speechwriter, a communications manager, uh, you know, liaison, like a planner, like uh, analyst, technical support. Like, it's an army. So, um, and it's really hard. And I think also, I think people that come from diverse backgrounds have a harder time asking for help. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of, hey, you know, don't rock the boat. There's a lot of mm -hmm. cultural bias. We, we are, you know, we are raised to, Keep our mouth shut. Just you know, don't rock the boat. Don't ask. Don't don't make a big fuss. Don't ask for uh, a lot of help. So we have to change that, and it's through education. I really think the key word here is access. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and would you say that that part of that part of the the struggle maybe mm -hmm. to ask for help or to speak up when you see the disparate access or to speak up if you're not getting the support or there aren't the processes in place. Do you think part of that hesitancy can also be the lack of community? So if you think, well, you're you're the lone wolf, if you think you're the yeah. the the token, mm. whatever the case yeah. may be, yeah. and you're so lucky, so lucky to have been chosen, so lucky yeah. to have that spot. Yeah. Um, yo, you're the chosen one that maybe the the notion of rocking the boat or speaking up um, can kind of, there's a layer of, oh, I could be replaced. There's a layer yeah. of, I don't want to be the troublemaker. Yeah. There's a layer of, oh, I should be so grateful that that I was chosen, that I've oh. made it. Yeah. Um, all of I, those things are true. All of those things are true. You're right. And all of those things. Um, you're right. Um, I think there are a few factors right there. One, there are cultural values. And in the work I do with seminars and, and leadership development, we, we address a lot of the cultural values yeah. of basically how we were raised, right? If you were raised um, in some cultures, for example, in Asian culture, silence is a sign of respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when the elders speak, you keep your mouth shut. You don't say anything, right? So if somebody that has grown with that value goes into corporate America, he, she, or they, they don't speak up in a meeting because they are just agreeing or because of a sign of, as a sign of respect, guess what happens? The leader in that meeting goes, hey, I'm not sure 
that Paul is that engaged. I'm not sure he's really committed to this project. Yeah. You know, however, you know, Mary, she was speaking a lot in the meeting. She's really a go-getter. She's going to mm -hmm. make it happen. And, and then one person gets penalized or, or misses the opportunity. So that's a classic example where cultural values come into play. The other thing that is very interesting is the role models. Yeah. We, you know, uh, I think it was Earl Nightingale who said something like, we define our opportunities based on what we see and what we know. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the best I saw in my community was that I could be the owner of the corner store, then that's what I aim for. Yeah. But when we go to a large company, if we don't see anybody that we can relate to or that we can say, hey, I, that could be me. That could be, you know, I could be the next, you know, Ellie. I could be the next John. Then it's really hard for you to even visualize that that's possible. And that's yeah. why moving people up and ensuring that we have the right role models, that people can see somebody that they can, reflect and and see themselves in that person it's so important um I, there was an example there was a, a a very successful microsoft executive and he's latino and he has a you know a thick accent i cannot tell you how many people told me directly later hey and you know they said hey because this other person it's like the leader of the entire sales organization for microsoft and he has a big accent i feel that i can also do it So again, it's like something that you need that extra, that extra kind of like push or pull from somebody. So you're yeah, absolutely I mean, right. No community, no role models make yeah. things 10x more difficult for, and it's for this, for women, people of color, people from different groups, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. You have to see it in order to even know that it's possible. Absolutely. You have absolutely. to be able to see it. I mean, that's why I have my nonprofit the Made to Change the World Foundation. It's mm -hmm. all about bringing in the mentorship. It's all about expanding the possibilities, allowing people to dream and to know, mm -hmm. yes, anything you want is possible. And this is what it looks like. And there is a path that you can follow to get there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. Great. You know, and that's so much about... Uh, what you do with your mentorship and and the the programs that you offer and the processes that you put in place and all of the workshops that you've done. It's about, to your point earlier, these are the best practices. These yeah. are the processes that you can follow. These are the routes that you can take. These are what opportunities look like. These are where there um, are gaps in the opportunities mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that can be filled. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's be open. The world and the corporate world was somewhat challenging for minorities and for women before. Mm -hmm. And with what happened with COVID, which is, you know, most people, um, most companies going into hybrid or remote work mm -hmm. arrangements, specifically when we talk about information workers, right? You know, people who are not in the front line, um, uh, consumer, uh, consumer or customer facing. So, Unfortunately, uh, African Americans, you know, uh, black and brown people are quitting more than than the average and than white people. And then the other thing that's happening is as companies are starting to try to pull people back into the office, more uh, people of color and women are wanting to stay at home or to work from home more days. So because they, you know, and, and let's let's look at the reasons for this. One. Um, they're at home, but they're also taking care of other things that are happening with their families and their communities. Second, you know, we may have less access to services or to nannies or to childcare or other things. And third, you know, I also think there, there's something here that it could also mean, you know, some of, some of us didn't feel as welcome as we wanted to. So we feel better at home. Uh, but that brings another set of challenges because then uh, we were talking before about speaking up in a meeting. Um, I work with a lot of companies and a lot of teams ask me, hey, how do I show up uh, in, a, in a hybrid or virtual world where most of the calls are like this in a Zoom, Microsoft Teams or, or Slack or some kind of a video conference? And the answer is you have to be a little bit more proactive to show yep. up. Because here's the danger. Let's let's take a, an average, you know, woman. You are, you know, you're doing your job. Okay, you show up to the meeting. There are whatever, 10, 12 people in the meeting. So you're basically just one tile on the screen. And you're listening and you're taking notes and you, and you agree with what hap what's happening in the meeting. 
So at the end of the meeting, the meeting ends and you go and do, you know, do your the rest of your job. If you did not say anything in the meeting, yep. it, it almost feels, or some people, some leaders may think that you are not there, that you don't care, that you're not committed, that you are multitasking. So it's kind of an extra, you know, onus on us. Now we, not only we have to be there, but we also have to make sure that our presence is felt because yes. out of, out of sight, out of mind. So for yeah. example, I coach people that no matter what, you have to say something in the meeting. Yep, you cannot absolutely. be silent. Okay. Absolutely. And if you, and here's a joke uh, or the question people say, well, but what if I agree with everything and I don't have any questions and I don't have anything to add. And then the feedback I give, the suggestion I get to people is at least say that you agree with somebody, yep. what somebody said, and even better, ask a neutral, clarifying question. Yep. So it, it, don't ask a question to say, hey, Shelly, Ellie, I'm not sure what you said is right. No, don't do that. Or, or don't challenge somebody. But if you say, hey, Ellie, I love what you shared at that point about inclusion. Is there anything that we can also bring from this other effort into this? Or, hey, I love what, where you're going with this idea. Can you tell me more? And right there, it's a completely neutral to positive statement. Yep. It opens the door for more conversation. And you as, a, as, as an employee, you get the points for participating. Because, and then psychologically, people, okay, you know, he's, he or she is involved, he cares, etc. So we have, to, we have to work with those things. Another thing that is very important, it's also how you show up. You know, um, you know, some people are in the meeting, but, you know, the camera's there and they're like looking to the side or looking down. <laughs> and then you, you don't feel they care. Um, we, we had this, uh, with these meetings with this executive and he kept turning off the camera because he was eating. And at some point we had to say, hey, it's not cool for you to be eating or to... If, even if you just turn off the camera, right there, the subliminal message you're sending to all of us is that you don't care that much. Yeah. So again, you have to yeah. think through those things. You have to think through those things. And sometimes people, you know, it's by the way, it's easier to put something in the chat than to say, hey, I, you know, I want to add something or I want to just say that I agree with what Ellie said, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's hard. It's harder, but we have to do that. Otherwise, you kind of fall farther behind and that's not good for anybody. Yeah, so, I mean... To yeah. your point of, of out of sight, out of mind, I think yeah. it is so important in this Zoom universe uh, to speak up, to have your presence uh, not just seen, but but mm -hmm. felt. And I love the action item, that, that tip and trick that you've given that anyone can use, whether you are in corporate America or whether you're an entrepreneur or it, it doesn't matter. We're all living on Zoom <laughs> these days. And I love the idea of acknowledging and asking a follow-up question. And even if that follow-up question is, 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 tell us more about that, or is there anything else we can do? That is an incredibly powerful question because it shows not only that you're present, but that you're paying attention, that you're engaged, and that you care. When we move into the startup world, I love technology. Uh, I love that it's um, it presents scalable solutions. And I think that if we want to continue elevating women and communities of color, etc., we need to get those groups to not be just consumers of, of solutions and technology, but the creators and producers. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that we bring in more women, more people of color into this world. There are so many opportunities, and like you said, there are some challenges. The first challenge is basically lack of information and guidance. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the venture world has been historically, you know, white male, and that's just what happened, right? You know, uh, yeah. we have to, and, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of a club, right? You would get in, you would work for one of these VC firms or one of the, you know, of, of the startups that were successful. By the way, it's a it's a hits model. People love betting again and again on people that have been yep. successful. Yep. So the hardest thing is raising your your money for your first startup and then being successful. Once you're successful one time, you're golden. You can then continue like you know recreating, etc. So um, and there's some data. For example, TechCrunch has some data. Um, we have seen increases in the funding for early stage startups 
uh, for African Americans to go up in the last couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, for lat for Latinos, for Latinx, it has been flat. So that's an mm -hmm. issue. A, a bunch of us got together a couple um, a month ago to discuss this problem because we need to make sure that we see that you know that increment in in the funding. Um, but again, the the most important thing is access to information, sharing success models, sharing best practices. Um, like we said before, making sure that we ask for help. Yeah. And there are many resources, you know, uh, female, brown, and black entrepreneurs who want to go into the startup world. They shouldn't go or start alone. They should no, absolutely they not. They should work with <laughs> accelerators, incubators, startup studios. Uh, mentorships, because there's so many things that you are going to face the same challenge. If you work with any of these other organizations, you may be able to learn from the best practices and avoid some very common mistakes. The other thing I'll say is there's so much content online, uh, you know, the Y Combinator, like video series and all these other groups. There's so much information out there. So if you have time, anybody has time, they can learn more. Really quickly, what would you say is uh, your best tip for resiliency or coping for someone who asks and then maybe uh, hears a whole lot of no? What? How can you help them to continue on? Yeah. So I like knowing my odds. What I like knowing my probability. For example, in the startup world, it's a 90% plus rejection business, right? You're going to ask 100 people, 90 are going to say thanks, no thanks, no, not interested, not now, talk to me later, etc. So once you know that up front, then you don't feel bad. Uh, and the other, the other line that I like, and a friend of mine gave this one to me, is the following. When you get a no, you can think about this. A no is a step closer to a yes. Because now you know that that person's not ready, but you learn from that conversation and you go to the next one. So you need to know the chat, the probabilities and not take these things personally. Um, by the way, on the startup world, I would say um, it's not for everybody because the rejection and the challenges are, are, are huge. Uh, somebody asked Elon Musk a few months ago, What advice do you have for entrepreneurs? Um, and what kind of motivation can you give to them? And his answer was pretty funny. He said, hey, if you need motivation and encouragement, then you shouldn't do it. Because it like, like what a lot of the things he has done, these are hard things sometimes. And you have to have a real strong belief in what you're doing. That is the right thing that you're going to find a way. While at the same time, being very open to and flexible because In the startup world, most of the successful startups had to pivot, had to change, had to modify things. Sometimes we think the winning idea is X. And then as you talk with 25 potential customers, you realize that what they want and what they need is something different. And you go and you adjust for that. So you have to have that balance. Uh, in the other part of well-being that comes to mind, it's more around mental, well, uh, mental health, um, physical and emotional health we health health and well-being and it's really important for people to do self-care and to take good care of themselves nobody can just run a marathon you know 24 7 for 10 years nobody can do that we all need rest we all need to take care of of ourselves we need to make sure that we have enough positive experiences that you know some of us are sitting in front of a computer all day long we need to get up and walk We need to move. Being seated all day long is not healthy for anybody. Um, so again, pick, and, and there's so many things, right? Some people do yoga, some people do mindfulness or meditation. By the way, I think a lot of those apps are wonderful. So I know a lot of people that use them. Pick something, pick one or two things that work for you. For some people, maybe taking a nice you know, bath. For somebody else, maybe going out for a run. For somebody else, is just sitting and, and looking at nature. For somebody else, maybe talking to a loved one on the phone. But pick something that fills your spirit and that makes you feel alive and good and make sure that you sprinkle that through your days because uh, a lot of the work, whether you're in corporate or whether you're doing your startup, a lot of people are going to be working very hard. So it's important to pace ourselves. So what do you do to 
uh, fill your cup? What's your self-care uh, routine? I am awful at this. So I a couple of things that bring me a lot of joy. One, um, uh, going for my coffee. Um, I didn't drink coffee. I live in Seattle. I didn't drink coffee a long time ago. Now I drink coffee, and that's like an enjoyment moment. So I love that. Uh, you see a lot of guitars back there, so I play a lot of uh, guitar. Uh, that brings me a lot of joy when I and I hear a song on the on, on the radio or online, and I just try to figure it out and I play it. That puts me in a great zone and brings me a lot of happiness. And then doing things with with family and loved ones, um, just conversations with my kids or with loved ones. It's it's something that really brings uh, brings me a lot of joy. And, and something that sounds really weird, but I do get a lot of satisfaction and reward from doing things for other people. I do believe in service. I, I you know, uh, there's a quote, I'm going to butcher it, but it's something about it's, you know, one of the life's purposes is for us to get lost in the service of others. Something like that. I, I think when we are providing service to others, um, it's it's something really beautiful and it brings me a lot of joy. I'm saying that, by the way, don't lose yourself, don't don't neglect yourself, uh, because I believe in the in the oxygen mask in the airplane analogy. You have to put the oxygen mask on you first before you can help those people around you. If you don't put the oxygen mask and you help everybody else and you don't put the oxygen on you, then you you die. So put the oxygen mask first, take good care of yourself, and then be of service to others. So that brings me a lot of joy. And then a lot of other little things, you know, I love reading, so I'm, I'm super curious and reading brings me a lot of joy. I'm kind of a, a, a nerd for like useless factoids about a lot of things in life. So, you know, things that bring a smile to my face are really good for the heart and for the mind. Absolutely. And you definitely live a life of service. You definitely live a life of impact. You bring so much joy to the world. You show up so powerfully in the world. As we start to wind down here today, let's imagine that you've come to the end of your best life. It has been your life just full to the brim, mm -hmm. your life best lived. Yep. What do you want them? To say about you when you're gone what do you want to be remembered for yeah so my personal motto is very simple it's leave things better than i found them uh, and i do my best i try uh, to to live that and to embody that every day and to me there's a kind of a very easy way to think about it and that's the as follows it doesn't matter who it is or what happens. If I have an engagement or I have a conversation with you, I hope that at least you feel a little bit better than before we met, a little bit more uplifted, a little bit more excited about the future, a little bit more uh, encouraged about, about what you're doing and possibilities. So, and it doesn't matter whether the conversation was a two minute conversation or a two hour conversation. I think we all have the power to do that. So that's to me, you know, I, I I want people to feel better. I want people to think, hey, you know, whatever in engagement or interaction I had with him, um, he made me feel good or he, you know, he was able to show me something greater than what I believe at the time. So that's, that's how I want to live life. And sometimes it's not about the humongous things you do. It's a lot about the, many, many, many smaller things you do. And then when you look at that from a very macro perspective, you can see the trend and you can see the impact. Uh, so that's that's how I think about this. And of course, I, you know, I want to make sure that more people, uh, what I call the underestimated, so women, black and brown, and other diverse groups end up in a better place. And that's why we're doing Tech Pass. That's why I'm doing all the work with startups. That's why I do the work with corporations, because there's there's a lot of upside there and a lot needs to be done. And I think it's up to us to make that change. So I really, you know, 20, 30 years from now, I want to be able to look at numbers from companies and say, yeah, women are not 25% of the workforce in tech companies. Women are 
55 percent you know i want women to be more than half right um i want you know i want people of color to be represented at a minimum at the same level as they are in the general population in the us so those are some benchmarks for me to think about so that's it you know hopefully helping make things like better for for others amazing thank you so much for being here again thank you for the the work that you do um thank you for the opportunities that you create and the communities that you build and the people that you nurture i know that this legacy that you envision uh you're living it every day you're creating it every day so thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for all the work you're doing to also drive incredibly powerful super positive social impact and, and creating opportunities and helping people achieve their dreams i think that's super important and i applaud you from your work for your work thank you so much thank you till next time thank you